to Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. My name is Diana Rodriguez, and today we are going to be covering part one of a STEAM lesson, which is tsunami and printmaking. Now, STEAM lessons incorporate science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Specifically for this, we're going to be focusing in on the science of tsunamis and the art of printmaking. Your NGSS standards for this lesson are going to be ESS3 and ETS1. Now students, let's get started. Have you ever seen an image like this in the news? All of this devastation along a coastline in the world? If you have, you know that this is the result of what is known as a tsunami. Some folks might refer to it as a tidal wave. However, oceanographers prefer that we do not use that term because frankly, the tides have nothing to do with it. A tsunami is the result of a large underwater occurrence that is often caused by an earthquake, a volcanic eruption, any type of major eruption, even a glacier calving can cause it. However, 80% of tsunamis are going to occur in the Pacific in what is known as the Ring of Fire, where you have a huge amount of volcanic and earthquake activity. So that is why you do not see that as frequently um, in United States news. However, this is something that causes a great deal of devastation in the Indo-Pacific waters. Now, what does a tsunami look like out in the open ocean? It just looks like a wave. It can look as small as only a foot in height as it's traveling along. So what's the big deal about that? Well, this is a, this is a wave that has a lot of energy and it has a very long wavelength, which means as it travels across the water, it's not gonna lose very much energy. How fast is it going to go? It can go up to 500 miles per hour, which means that it can move as fast as a jet airplane and can cross the Pacific Ocean within one day. That's pretty fast. Now, as it moves in shallower to the coast and approaches that continental shelf, the bottom is going to become more and more shallow and the wave is going to slow down. The bottom of the wave is gonna slow down. The top of the wave is gonna keep moving, which is going to cause it to surge or to crest. That can be up to a hundred feet in height. And when it comes and it crashes down, you can imagine there is a world of devastation that occurs. So for today's activity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate a tsunami with materials that you probably have at home so that you can make your own model coastline and village. If you look at my, my box here, I have a rectangular container that's going to represent the coastline as well as our open ocean. I have a lot of recycled newspaper materials that most of us will only toss or recycle. So we're gonna crumble that up and use that as our structure with this container. I have a lot of Crayola um, modeling clay and model magic that I use to create the surface of the coastline and create that continental, the slope of the continental shelf. Then I have a bucket full of water that I've used to fill my container up to the slope and then I created a very rudimentary village made of paper. Okay, so now that you know the materials that you need for this activity, let's get started. Once you've filled your container with water up to the gentle slope, you're going to need a firm surface. You can use a section of cardboard, you can use um, a laminated piece of material, you can use the lid of a container. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to need a nice flat surface that you can use to displace that water and create your tsunami. I'm going to replace the, the roof on my village and I'm going to insert my lid into the container perpendicular, uh, parallel to the end or the open ocean end of my model. And I am going to gently and swiftly create a wave that is going to move forward. You notice that all that happened was just a little bit of lapping. So let's add some more water and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when we create a larger wave. That would be normal wave action. Now let's create a tsunami. Look at that. Everything is wet. 
if, if somebody was living on a coastline and they did not have a sturdy structure, everything that was there would be, would be crushed and crumbled. You would have a lot of devastation that resembles this. Obviously, a tsunami is going to be much more strong than something that is just a small model, but it does a good enough job of showing you the ripple effect and the crash action of that wave. Now, that is a coastline that does not have any protection. So natural protections that can be in place are mangrove forests. Now mangroves are amazing plant structures. They can grow in the water and they anchor the substrate. Okay, so mangrove plants or a mangrove forest are really important vegetation to a coastline environment, A, because they can live in water and B, because they limit a lot of erosion and C, the most important thing, they are often nurseries for a lot of different marine species. Now we're going to create our own little mangrove forest using some plants, some plastic plants that I found. So we're going to add in our own coastline structures. What do you think this is going to do to limit the devastation that occurs from a tsunami? This would be a good time to write down your hypothesis about what this is going to occur. Now, let's go ahead and try our action again. Let's insert our lid. Let's create that wave action. Look at how much less this building or this paper village was affected because we had the buffer of that mangrove forest. I'm going to encourage you to research your own um, information about mangroves and articles and present your own theories based upon the observations that you have found creating your own models. How much is the wave action impacting a village with your mangrove forest as opposed to without? I hope that this parallels what you will find in the news as far as the importance of that mangrove forest buffering and limiting the devastation and the destruction. Okay, folks, that's it for part one's activity. My Georgia teachers, your Georgia standards of excellence for this activity are going to be S6, E3, SE52, and S8, P4. Hope to see you for part two. Bye.